So picture this. It's the mid-2000s and John Paulson, a seasoned investor, walks into a party where everyone is celebrating the booming real estate market. Yet while the crowd sees sunshine, he senses a storm brewing. In the midst of this real estate fiesta, Paulson was the one who noticed the punch bowl was spiked. Risky subprime mortgages were being passed around like party favors, repackaged into so-called high-grade investment products. But Paulson wasn't fooled. He saw these mortgage-backed securities for what they were, ticking financial time bombs. But why were the mortgage-backed securities a time bomb? Before the crash, the U.S. real estate market was booming, with prices rising and lending standards loosening. This led to an increase in subprime mortgages, which were loans given to borrowers with poor credit histories. These mortgages were then packaged into mortgage-backed securities, MBS, and collateralized debt obligations, CDOs, which were sold to investors. The ratings agencies often gave these securities high credit ratings, making them appear safer than they actually were. Now Paulson wasn't just playing a hunch. He had the foresight to see the iceberg in the path of the Titanic. He predicted that when the adjustable rate mortgages started resetting, a cascade of defaults would follow. So how did he react? He decided to bet against the party. Using financial instruments known as credit default swaps, Paulson essentially took out insurance on the very securities he believed were about to implode. It's akin to betting against a sports team. Only the game here was the health of the housing market. Paulson's strategy was threefold. First, he identified the weak links, the mortgage-backed securities loaded with subprime loans. Then he shopped for credit default swaps, paying premiums that were a mere fraction of what he'd earn if the market took a nosedive. And finally, he waited for the fall. And fall it did. The housing market collapsed, mortgage default surged, and Paulson's credit default swaps turned into winning lottery tickets. When the dust settled, he found himself atop a pile of cash, with his fund's profits exceeding $15 billion. While the rest of the financial world was left in shock, Paulson was probably wondering where to dock his new yacht. So what's the moral of this story? It's not just about one man's financial victory, it's a warning about the dangers of herd mentality and the misuse of complex financial instruments. It's a testament to the power of contrarian thinking in a world where it's all too easy to follow the crowd. John Paulson's tale serves as a reminder that sometimes the most profitable move is to swim against the tide, armed with insight and a well thought out strategy. It's a financial fable that shows how, with the right blend of foresight and strategy, you can turn a profit by betting on a storm in a market awash with misplaced optimism.